watch your words because they're very creative, right? People think that words are descriptive and that we're describing things, but we're actually creating things. Words are wands. You know, mm-hmm. what wand and what magic are you creating with the words that are coming out of your mouth, right? Your, your body will tell you what it wants and what it doesn't want down to the products you use, down to the things you're putting into it. And it will have a reaction if it does, if it, if it rejects <laughs> the artificial mm-hmm. things that you're choosing to do. And again, everyone has their own journey about that. Like it's, it's a very personal choice and decision. Hey, Health Junkies, on this episode of the Health Fix podcast, I brought back Alicia Kay. Alicia has spent the last 19 years as a licensed mental health counselor and a certified EMDR clinician. She's specializing in supporting clients who struggle with childhood wounding, physical and sexual trauma, relationship issues, addictions, and much more. In addition to her work as a psychotherapist, she is also a certified life coach and certified somatic release breathwork practitioner. Now, Alicia is all about teaching clients how to accept all parts of themselves to achieve balance and equilibrium within their mind, body, and spirits. So it manifests in their external world. And so today on the Health Fix podcast, Alicia and I are diving into all kinds of things, like how to use your words as magic for manifesting great things in your life, but also talking about the collective and and how us women can work together versus compare and break each other down. And we even get to talk about the Golden Girls for a minute because who doesn't like the Golden Girls? Now, we have a fun podcast for you, and really, it's it's a moving one because it's so important in this time for us ladies to really look at what we're consuming on social media, what we're consuming on TV, and really understanding, is it helping or is it hindering us? And take a hard look at the things you say to yourself and the things you were thinking about yourself. Now, some of these things could be old programming from childhood, things you've heard, things you gave meaning to. Yes, these things are all relevant and things that you can change to help empower yourself and really move yourself forward. So if you're struggling with body image, you're struggling with your health, you're struggling with anything in life and feeling a little bit alone and looking for a tribe or kind of figuring out your space in life, this podcast is for you. So let's reintroduce you to Alicia Kay. Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Alicia Kay, welcome back to the Health Fix Podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Janine. I'm excited to be here again. Well, we've had such a fun time chatting with things uh, since uh, our original podcast. And now, you know, because you have your own podcast, which, by the way, guys, is Alive and Awake with Alicia. Great podcast. She's had some awesome guests and wow, good stuff there. And of course, one of the things that I thought of just in chatting with Alicia and just listening to my clients talk is is really this concept of authentic beauty versus trying to do all the things to have us look 20 years younger. And, you know, we see it on social media all the time. Look 20 years younger, look better than you ever did. And it's like, is that realistic? What, you know, what do we do here? So, of course, we're going to kind of keep that as our theme today. But first and foremost, I, I always like to ask folks in terms of their own journey with aging and beauty and if you don't mind sharing with us, what kind of things have you looked at in terms of your body, your your skin, hair, whatever it may be, and and been like, man, I really need to to do something, or should I do something? What do I do here? Or even if you found yourself doing the comparison game, it's it is such a journey that we go through as women, and I think the first thing to understand is that it is a journey, and it's a journey of self-discovery and self-acceptance to eventually Mm self-love. And for me, it started shaming my body and trying to change my body in my twenties where I was really competitive. I got into bodybuilding. You know, I thought that if I could make my body look a certain way or look perfect, or I could complete this challenge, 
then maybe I would accept myself or maybe I'd be happy with myself or maybe I would find the love of my life to come in and <laughs> rescue me. Like all the things that we do as, as women, um, where it was about trying to change the way I looked so that I could change the way that I feel. Mm -hmm. And of course that doesn't work because <laughs> with that, I developed an eating disorder and a form of like body dysmorphia where anytime I looked in the mirror, all I saw was like fat or overweight or, you know, like when you're, you know, 12% body fat as a, as a woman, which is so incredibly unhealthy. And then to have that image in my mind to use for the rest, not, not now, not anymore. I've worked through that, but for so many years to, to look at myself in the mirror and compare myself to that image. And I think we all do that, right? It doesn't matter if you're 12% body fat, but I work with so many clients too that are like, oh, you know, when I was 20 pounds lighter, I used to judge myself and now I'm heavier and I'm still judging. Like we're always comparing ourselves to a different version mm -hmm. of what we used to look like or what we should look like, which is this inner critic and adversarial voice that we have. And it took me a really long time to heal like my binge eating disorder, to heal the yo-yo dieting that I used to do and really get to a place of love and acceptance for my healthy body and my healthy version of myself. And it has been a journey with aging as well um, around looking, you know, seeing pictures that are taken and seeing wrinkles and having to really dial in my ego and my fear and the program that I know that I'm running on that isn't my real self that has to look at that as a beautiful thing and not a judgmental thing anymore. And I think that that's what we're being called toward, right? There's authentic beauty in aging versus this artificial glamour that we've bought into from a societal perspective that doesn't work, brings more unfulfillment, brings feelings of failure and more fear. And when we're holding on to that as our energetic mm -hmm. state, we age faster. <laughs> yeah, I believe that because I mean, you, you look at anyone who's really gone right through a really stressful experience you, and you look at a period a picture before and after that period you're going to see like the the face does the skin does change the body does look different and then when someone's energy is better and they've shifted it does look like they became you know it changes it's crazy and no botox or anything else included yeah and and it's it's so interesting that well no we can go on we can <laughs> we can say why we're not being taught about our energy and about, you know, really aligning with our true self, our core self, you know, healing the body, healing the chakra systems, getting out that density so that more of like your light body and your true energy and essence can come in. Cause that's the real fountain of youth, mm -hmm. right? Like we have these programs in our DNA that know how to heal ourselves that know how to age well and, you know, of course we're being infiltrated by propaganda and media to take these things and do this stuff to change ourselves, to change our bodies. And, and it's, it's sad to me because I feel we're suffering as the feminine collective with what we're being infiltrated with. I would agree. I would agree. I mean, I th before we hit record, I had mentioned that I, I was part owner in a spa for for some time and we were getting inundated with folks, you know, being like, do Botox, you know, carry this product, carry that product. And while I was looking into them, kind of thinking in my head, well, this would be really good for for people that want these kind of services. But at the same time, I was like, I don't feel right about doing these. I don't feel right. There's just something inherently in, uh, in me going, I don't know. And I'm not judging anyone, of course, that's done Botox or tried any of these things. It's not about that. It's more just me being like, am I offering the best option for aging here? Because I don't believe we can necessarily reverse aging. I feel like we can slow things down. But I don't, I mean, I think we're going to be aging no matter what. Absolutely. You know, and I think it's the food that we eat and the chemicals that we're using and all of that, that can certainly speed up that process. 
Uh, but to your point, when you put something into your body that is foreign, that's going to make you look a certain way, you have to really become very clear and understand that when you make that choice, again, no judgment for people that do. I have friends right. that do, and that's fine. But for me personally, I don't ever want to have myself look a certain way and then be unhappy with my real true self when that's not in my body anymore. And that's the dynamic that it creates. It creates this comparison, you know, before and after, you know, here and now versus then, and you're never actually really happy and fulfilled and full of joy with your authentic appearance. And I think there's so much, there's shame in that. Like, I feel, I feel sad that that's the way that we have been conditioned to be because we haven't been taught that there's a process with aging. And when you go into like the crone and the sage, there's natural beauty in that embodiment, mm -hmm. right? When a woman knows herself and she loves herself and she accepts herself, she exudes this energy and aura that people want to be around and they think is magnetic, mm -hmm. right? Even if she has wrinkles on her face and she has weight on her body, there's an energy about her that we're not teaching people how to achieve. Mm. This, I mean, huge, huge. And, and I think you're right on in terms of the energy and, and how to harness that as we get older. So it seems like from what you're saying, and of course, I also am going to be a little biased on it because I believe this, but I just want to make sure that we're clear um, for, for the audience, getting your energy right before you decide to make any decisions with beauty changes, let's put it that way, is better and and not let's not use better. Let's not. I don't want to use a comparison term, but more like a a a solid way to go about things. And maybe you won't even need to, or, or feel the need to do it after you work on that. Yeah. And when we say your energy, I want to be yeah. more clear or decisive about what that means. Is we have mm -hmm. to understand that there is a like a darker side of ourselves or a darker side of our thoughts that every single person on the planet has. Like we can call that our ego. We can call that, you know, the dark forces. We could call that the devil, like whatever term you want to use, it doesn't matter. But the way that it comes in is through our mind and it automatically makes us judge ourselves. And when you're in judgment, you're essentially in fear, lack, scarcity. And we have to be very clear about what that inner voice is saying and then make a different choice. No, I choose to believe that I'm, I'm in love with my healthy body. I choose to believe that I can change my body in whatever way I want to change that. So you align with a different energy that's more expansive and loving and kind and compassionate and gives yourself grace over fear, right? So it's always this ping pong match in the brain of what am I choosing to think right now and buy into? And is that coming from a place of truth, love, and wisdom, or from the societal fear that's been programmed into me since the day that I've been born as a woman? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about those societal fears a little <laughs> bit, because those are big, right? They're big. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm human, right? I have some too. Everyone kind of has those thoughts, you know, and I always joke with with people that, well, I didn't want to age like my mother, which my mother unfortunately passed at 62 of breast cancer. You know, I don't want to go out like that. And so, of course, that's why a lot of what I do is because I don't want to go out like that. Sure. But at the same time, I also did watch because of the cancer, you know, she was having a harder time. She was more tired. She couldn't exercise, couldn't keep up on things. And so, you know, part of it for me was like, okay, how do I prevent all of this? But at the same time, you know, I think a lot of people will be thinking about their parents, maybe that are still alive. Maybe they're in their 80s, maybe they're 90s. Maybe they passed early because of unhealthy behaviors. A lot of people look at that and go, well, wait, isn't that just genetics? Mm. Isn't that just going to happen? Do I have any, you know, do I have any? I, I feel like there's a lot of hopelessness too wrapped up in this. Yeah. 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 And I think it's, you know, the nature versus nurture. Sure. We have the DNA and we may have the gene, but 
you know, as you know, as a holistic practitioner, there's things that we can do to optimize our health and to reach our full potential by, you know, not smoking the way that our, our <laughs> ancestors did, or like putting alcohol into our body and our system all the time, cleaning up our gut, um, the products that we use on our face and on, and on our skin actually can create more aging because look at the list that's on it. Like if you don't know what's on that list and you can't see that in nature, then it's man-made and it's a chemical and it's not what your skin is asking you to put into it or what your body is asking it to, to consume, right? It's not alive. It's not living. And, um, it's, it's, you know, meant for, you know, again, it's a sales tool. So, I think that when we look at our ancestors, we don't look at them with fear. We look at them because they didn't have the tools and the technology and the information available to them the way that we do now as a culture, right? They didn't have those same, uh, you know, like there's so much out there now. It's, it's like at our fingertips where they didn't understand, right? I mean, think of the way that they grew up. Like my mom used to be able to smoke in the car with me, <laughs> like, like, yeah. you know, we didn't have to wear seatbelts. You're like, <laughs> so, so they just didn't ha have these things. And we know so much more now, and it's a choice to not pay attention to that or not make the changes that you need to make in order to not let your family line be your destiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. We have the, the tools are available to to optimize your health and optimize your um, aging movement. Right. Like the way we move our body, the way we tune into our body, what we put into our body, because what we consume consumes us like the chemicals we use, like all of that we know. But some people choose not to take that seriously or choose to believe that this is their fate. Right. 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 And and I think, you know, we do hear, we do hear programming on that, you know, sometimes from relatives, my dad used to always be like, you want to know what a woman's going to look at, look at her mother, you know, and it's just like, Oh, dad, <laughs> you know, and we, it's so shaming. As you say that I'm thinking, I was like, Oh my gosh. Right. So then when we look at ourselves in the mirror and we see our mother, what does that do? Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> right. Yeah. Shame is toxic for the soul. Toxic. We always have to make a different choice. What 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 do we have control over? Yeah, I think it's hard for some people to kind of look at that shame and be like, OK, Alicia, how do how do I get out of this? cycle where do i even begin when i'm trying to move out of the shame cycle when i'm trying to move out of this com like comparing myself to everyone kind of or, or anyone anyone and everyone celebrities included you know what what do we do how do we how do we begin this process yeah i think there comes a point in every woman's life usually after their 40s where they start to get in touch with their authenticity and who they are. And you start to question who you are and how you want to live and what's important to you. And you look back on the journey and eventually you get to the place where it's, I am who I am, who I am. And all of my experiences made me who I am. And this is how I get to walk in the world. Now, I don't have to change anything about myself to fit in. I don't have to change anything about myself to be loved or to be accepted, I get to enjoy the journey, right? I get to be in joy now. I get to be in love with my life now. And we're not taught that because we've gotten away from um, like the, the wise woman and the grandmother that we used to go and we used to sit with and hear all her stories. And we've been separated, you know, we've been we don't turn to our elders anymore. And so of course there's going to be fear of dying and fear of aging when it looks so horrible now. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it does. It does. It, it, you look at what's out on, you know, 
let's put it this way, go to the grocery store, go out, you know, go to, a, you know, the best one actually, which which invokes a lot of, it, it did invoke a lot of fear in me is going with a friend to bingo. Mm-hmm. I, to some of the casinos that will be a very big eye opener and you go, Oh my gosh, I don't want to end up like this. Like, how do I not end up here? You know, what, what do I do? Um, in this case and and is this all that i have right is this all that aging is and i know i've kind of diverted off of beauty and went (laughs) went to the casino department here but it is one of the things where we think about like what am i going to be doing and goes to life purpose right well you have to really get clear on what lie you're being sold right you know generations ago were told you know you don't get to enjoy your life until after retirement right? Mm -hmm. Like once you're retired, your life is essentially over and then you can go enjoy things. So if you want to believe that lie and you want to say that you need to stop working or stop using your brain, you're going to decompensate, right? You're going to not age well. You're going to settle for status quo and you're going to think that that's your fate because that's what you've been told. And we have the right to challenge that. You know, the more we use our brain and the more we feel like we have a purpose, the the more we don't, well, I'm not judging anybody that goes to bingo night because they obviously like that. But, but I feel that when we're connected with each other, because you think about bingo brings connection, Mm -hmm. it makes you feel like you're a part of something, Mm -hmm. right? So does your purpose and what you want to do in the world and who you want to spend your time with and the quality of your relationships that uplift you where you don't need to look forward to that one thing. So I think there is just a new way of doing it and to decide when you're younger or our age that I don't want to stop living and having experiences just because I'm getting older. How do I want to spend the second half of my life? What is going to fill me up? Mm-hmm. Right? What brings me the most amount of joy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think that's important. I think that's important. And I think it ties into back into the beauty part, because I think for some people, perhaps trying to maintain the beauty, so seeking af- you know, out the fountain of youth helps us feel like we still belong mm. to the younger population or we're still part of the, the crew. And what if that was never supposed to be the way? Because if there's the sense of belonging to ourselves and to our what we want to create and cultivate on this planet and what we came for as unique individual souls, the young start to gravitate to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of, I guess you could probably say being the sage older woman, right? I want to be the like, I don't have kids, so I can't see, say necessarily the grandma, um, but the older woman that, you know, is is whipping up different types of herbal cocktails, you know, and and doing those kind of things. Like, here, honey, try this. This will help you out. You know, I always envisioned that kind of thing, you know, in my future and never really thought about how my appearance looked, actually. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if it really, I don't know if I'm just that much of a tomboy, if it didn't matter. Of course, I always wanted my skin to be healthy looking, sure. but I wasn't necessarily like that. So I always think about that for for my thought of things. And, and I guess what I'm getting at and why I'm bringing up my story is more because I want this podcast to be thought provocative, right? Yeah. For women to be like, really, what's, all the Botox, plastic surgery, faceless, who is it really for? Yeah. Why? I guess is the question. Why? Yeah. I was faced with this question, you know, pretty recently actually, and it was tied to my worth and what was revealed to me in one of my Akashic record readings was that, you know, there were lifetimes after lifetimes where I, where women and, you know, me included, where we were sold into marriage, right? Like we had to be bought and based on whoever was the highest bidder, 
based on our appearance, decided the life we get to have. And so when I think about how that used to be part of our earth energy and the planet and how women were always worried about how they looked and who was going to choose them, not only did it make them judge themselves and overly focus on their appearance to make their family happy, to earn their family money, to be taken care of, it also put us in competition with each other. And mm -hmm. that is still very much in our cellular memory. And so when we come with the mindset that we have to do these things to our bodies and change our appearance and change the way we look in order to get chosen or order to be loved and accepted and to be better than the younger woman that my husband's going to leave me for, <laughs> right? Like that's where all of that stems from. And it's, it's cellular memory in us that I really feel we are being called to transition out of. Hey, Hell Junkies, wanted to tell you about my pal, Dr. Anna Marie Frank's supplement line that specifically targets the needs of women. From anxiety to depression to getting focused and balancing those hormones, as well as helping with sleep, she's got you covered. Plus, she has teas too. This day and age, it's hard to know what supplement companies are up to when it comes to sourcing and quality. That's why I love to get to know company owners. Dr. Anna Marie has created formulas that combine what I would do if I owned a supplement and tea company. So wanted to tell you about them. As a listener of the Health Fix podcast, you can get 10% off your order by using the code D-R-J-K-R-A-U-S-E when you head to happywholeyou.com. Now, say you're driving or out on an adventure and you're not going to remember where to find this website. That's okay. My favorite products are all on my website at drjkrausnd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find everything I stand behind and use myself right there. So let's get back to the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, I definitely, when you go towards the aspect of I don't want my husband to leave me for a younger woman, that kind of stuff. Now, I also will think about, okay, if we think that way, now we're putting that energy out there yes. in the first place. So there's there's that aspect of things too. Do you, do you kind of feel that like if our energy, and, and when I'm speaking of energy, guys, I'm speaking about being able to love yourself. Well, you, when you're comfortable with who you are, I feel like that is more beautiful than someone who is not searching for you know who's who's not comfortable with who they are searching for the fountain of youth and that energy reflects on your relationship what do you think well absolutely because there's so much more that goes into someone leaving for a younger version right like mm -hmm. you know we as women have been trained to believe that if we're pretty enough, if we're smart enough, if we're great in bed, if we look great, then our man won't leave us. We, we know better than that now. Like we somehow took all the responsibility and put it on us mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. the ones that hold all the weight in the relationship to keep it together. I know that, you know, from the work that I've been doing with people and in, in, in my, in my work, we're evolving out of that, but that is still very, very resonant. And it has more to do with the quality and the depth of the connection in the relationship than it does with your appearance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Like when you're in a sacred union with someone and you're doing the work together and you're growing together and you're making commitments to each other over the stages of time as you age, right? Then there is no fear in that because you feel connected to your partner because you're connected to yourself and your soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was hoping you would say something like that. So folks could hear that because it's, it is something that, you know, I hear that I've heard that throughout the years too, with different family members mentioning that you better not gain too much weight, you know, this and that. And then there's also the, the aspect of, of looking at what we do choose to do mm -hmm. and and what we do like 
in terms of enhancements and and coming from a place of still loving yourself, but having these enhancements, but them back, you know, I'm kind of bringing the conversation back to why we choose to dye our hair, for example. Sure. I love my hair dyed. Right now, I haven't done it for a long time because I live in a house that we haven't gotten our water softener correct. And my person who does my hair told me that my hair would be banana yellow if oh, I no. tried. <laughs> and so, you know, it's one, it's a battle, right? And so I, I like to share my battles a little bit on the podcast because I think it can help folks too, because, you know, I like my hair that way. Right now I have like white on the side and some streaky and people are always like, your hair's so cool this one. I'm like, I like my cool streaks to my hair too. But I did really like the persona that came out and so this is where I'm getting to is the persona that came out with the the platinum blonde short hair that I had. What what's the psyche behind that when when you you you're OK with yourself, but there's little tweaks that bring out the pizzazz or bring out the persona in you. And right now I'm kind of like feeling I, I've lost a little of my pizzazz because I can't tie my hair. <laughs> Sounds I so love weird. this. And I think. <laughs> With anything, there's always the balance. Right. And the way that I encourage people to make that choice or make that decision are, are, is your do, are you doing it because you love it and it lights you up and you feel great about it? Or are you doing it because you're afraid or you're worried about what people will think of you if you don't look a certain way? Right. Mm -hmm. So if it's coming from a place of fear and judgment, then it's not coming from a place of love. You know, I have people who will say, oh my gosh, I'm not going into the grocery store. I don't have my hair or makeup done. And right. I'm like, okay, that's, that's a choice. But what does that, what does that really say about how you feel about your organic, authentic appearance? And I had to do a lot of work around this. Like I used to be the girl that, you know, if I had a boyfriend, I would go to bed, put mascara on. And as soon as I woke up in the morning, I would run to the bathroom, use mouthwash and put mascara on because I didn't want him to see me without makeup. And there, there became this like game that I was playing with myself of like, what is it about my natural appearance? When I look at myself in the mirror, what do I see? I used to not feel very beautiful. I used to feel very worthless and I didn't like myself very much. And I used to feel very broken. So I thought that I could change or control the way someone thought about me by me trying to change and control the way that I thought about me. Mm -hmm. And it took me a really long time to be able to look at myself in the mirror and say the things to myself, like the whole Pano Pano prayer, like, Alicia, I love you. I'm sorry for, I'm grateful for, thank you for, like, I'm proud of you for, and really getting in touch with who I was with all of this stripped away. And there was a period where I had to start questioning, am I doing my hair this way? Am I putting on my makeup because I care about what people think of me or because this is just me and I really like who I am? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's a valid, you know, debate in the head, right? And really getting to the bottom of it and really getting to it because, you know, for me, the, I like the hair, but like, I'm not into makeup. Like, I just, I joke that I don't know what I'm doing, which is kind of true, sort of. I, I mean, I have friends that have taught me. So it's like, I know what I'm doing, but like, I kind of like just having the little tint on the eyebrows sometimes and the eyelashes sometimes and forget it. It's just not my jam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's who you are. Right. right. It's like, that's who you are. And that's what we're, that's what we're ultimately longing for or searching for. Being comfortable with who you are. Right. And over not have all to ages, over all stages of your development as a woman who's going to age. That's what we came here for. Right. <laughs> Right. We we are going to get older. We are. And and as much as, you know, there are different techniques and things out there to help us with this. One of the things you mentioned was looking in the mirror. Do you have your clients do the like look in the mirror and do the hobona or whatever exercise it may be to to baby step into being comfortable looking at yourself without makeup or looking at yourself however it may be. 
I would love to hear what, what you're having folks yes, do. Yes, because that which you judge about yourself, you will project onto another. And meaning if you think that you look ugly, you're automatically going to think that that person is sitting across from you thinks you look ugly. Hmm. Um, it, it just comes out, right? Because the soul doesn't want you to think negatively about yourself. So it will project out until you're willing to address that. And I always say and preach the most important relationship you have in this lifetime is the one you have with yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you are unable to look at yourself in the mirror, then I would start with your journal. You know, it's addressing the negative things and, and being honest about those, but because the equal and opposite is always true in nature, there's always the opposite, right? Okay. So if I'm ugly, we'll just use that. A lot of women say I'm overweight. I'm fat. I'm like, that needs to be extinguished from your vocabulary because words are very, very creative. And you're actually attracting that more to yourself of what you don't want. But let's look at the other side. Let's look at the other truth. And let's, let's, let's start to re-identify and reprogram the brain with what is actually true. And then eventually be able to go and look in the mirror and say, look in your own eyes. And even if it's, you know, I have so much compassion for what you've been through. You know, I know that my soul created this body and created this avatar and this human vessel for me to experience this life in. And even though I don't feel like it's perfect right now, I know that it's meant for me. Whatever you can muster up is what you say. And you have to redevelop that connection with yourself because that's where the aura and the energy starts to change because the negativity can no longer take root. Right. Right. Not giving it a place, not giving it words. Right. When the light of your higher self starts to come in, the darkness cannot stay. It, it just, it's, it won't, it can't. Mm -hmm. That's definitely something that takes time. Right. And I'm oh, guessing I'm like looking and going, Hmm, <laughs> so much. <laughs> right. But Rome wasn't built in a day, you know, and you can't climb out Everest without taking the first step. Right. So it's just making the commitment and, um, you know, cause we don't, we don't want to feel crappy about ourselves. We know that doesn't feel right. We know it doesn't feel good. Right. But we've been conditioned to believe that that's just the way it is. Well, what if it's not? See, that's the thing. Like all these lies, like all these lies, everything that I thought was life was not. It's so, it's so wild, right? Like in, in, and your podcast alive and we just makes like, it is such a perfect title because in my head, it's just like everything. All right. I'll be honest. Since COVID, I've basically been like everything I've ever known was a lie. Everything. I know. Everything. <laughs> everything. And, and so now it's like coming to terms with it. Right. And coming to terms with like all of these things. Like, I, I think a lot of people might actually be in this boat too you know, having, starting to see the smoke in the mirrors. And I think that this was a time, if you look at like history and, you know, ascended masters and you, you know, you go the spiritual route, this was a time that was prophesied in history that we're living in right now for us to start to wake up to the truth of what's really been going on here. Yeah. It starts with the feminine because we're intuitive and we are very, um, we can see things, we can sense things. Mm -hmm. We know it. Mm -hmm. And the sensitivity that we've been kind of programmed in a lot of ways to simmer down, don't, you know, don't be so sensitive. It, you know, I keep thinking about all of it and I'm going, we've, as women, have been kept down mm -hmm. quite a bit. And I think the scale was the first invention to, <laughs> this is my joke, but to keep oh, women I busy, love that. to keep yeah. women busy so they didn't come up with really amazing ideas and take over the world. But yes, that's my feminism coming out. But I, I mean, the more I look at these, these things, I'm going, all right, scale, number one, keeps us busy. Number two, the aging thing. Yeah. I mean, two well, things. And the not feeling thing, right? To deny our true authentic feelings. 
Mm -hmm. here, take this pill, take this thing, do that. You know, like don't feel, don't express you're crazy, you know, all the things. And Mm -hmm. it, it, it took us out of balance, right? Masculine feminine energy is supposed to be very, very balanced. We have very specific roles in what we do and how we, how we, how we are on earth. And, and yeah, if you can take the feminine off of her power and you can make her turn on herself, what a beautiful game. (laughs) And then ultimately this is probably some of my impetus for the podcast is really getting women to realize that it's not worth it for us to judge ourselves and judge others. And, and we can be a lot more powerful to make change when we band together. You had mentioned, you know, compare, like stopping the comparison game and moving into our beauty and benevolence and how we can benefit each other. Yeah. You know, the, the more I've done my own work, the more I start to feel really safe around other women who are in their heart center, who are about sisterhood and building each other up and, you know, just really being there. And I think we're being called back to that. We're being called for connection and less competition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The collective, I mean, I look at, my favorite show the 80s was was Golden Girls. And, you you know, whether someone has identifies with one person or the other, whoever, it's fine. You you, you do you. I think the the biggest thing for me is more looking at the the women working together. Yes. Did they fight? Yes. Did they, you know, it was all funny in the end. But we're at the same time. Yes, it's 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 mainstream media. There was probably some programming in there too, but at the same time, it's looking at how can we band together? Maybe even if we look at the blue zones, the women, you know, living together uh, in a home together after husbands pass or or partners pass and thinking of like even that as, as my, my future thought process, because I'm thinking to myself, okay, I don't have kids. I have a small family, you know, what's, what's next for me when I get into my eighties, nineties and beyond. And, and so thinking about this, you know, teaming together thing, helping women who are single to just, or helping women who do not have kids to think about like these kind of things too. I love that. You know, and as you were talking, I'm like, of course the golden girls, like that's (laughs) that's amazing. But also the other side that we're being infiltrated with as a culture is like, the real housewives and like these caddy and this, like what women are doing to each other behind each other's backs and what they find valuable and how they're doing all these things to their body is like what our children and our younger generations are being infiltrated by. And that is a scary thing because it could easily lead in the other direction because it's certainly not breeding the stuff that we're talking about. No. Right. Like we live in a society where mental health is on the rise. Suicide is on the rise. Eating disorders are on the rise. Like all of it, all like the younger generation are getting, you know, plastic surgery, you know, gender change, like all the things that are happening because that energy that we've been conditioned by it, it starts early, right? It grabs hold of you so early. And then we think that that's the way to be successful or to be beautiful or to be pretty with all these, you know, again, nothing against like name brands, but like comparing yourself and like the things that you're buying and purchasing, you know, for, for temporary fulfillment and artificial glamor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's, I think it does take conversations like these to really imprint another way, right? The authentic way, the loving way the coming together way because it's Absolutely. really, it keeps us so separate from each other when we buy into all of that. So that's why, you know, just kill our televisions. Um, I know. Throw out our phones. I no. know. Um, but, but of course I don't want you to completely throw out your phone because you might not be able to listen to my podcast or Alicia's podcast. So we, I, you know, it's, it's being choosy, right? But it's also on the same lines. And this is something I, I'd love to talk about because it is another thing is like the younger generation. Mm-hmm. Even though I don't have kids, I'm highly invested in how do we get to the younger generation? 
I my thought is through our generation to really help us women lift ourselves up, band together so that we can teach our children to rise up and just put the fingers and the hand to the no. Um, we can use a little bit of the the um, modern stuff and say, hey, no, I'm not putting up with this craziness. Yeah, I think that that's where we're heading. I think this was the first year, you know, the the earth is under a new energy right now. We're really being called to rise into our truth, into our power, into our authentic selves and and really reclaim our sovereignty. And as we do that, I do feel that the collective will automatically start to shift because as we keep having these conversations and we keep talking to our youth and we have more and more parents that are waking up and talking to their children, like my, my child, like he, he came in already very aware, like the generations of children that are coming in now onto our earth plane, they're here to disrupt the norm. And eventually it won't be able to take root anymore, but it does take more and more women saying no and working through their own fear and making the different choices that we were talking about today so that they don't pass it on to their children, right? The, the more fear we have in us, like I work with a lot of women who were weight shamed by their mothers or, you know, the, their appearance was so important to their mothers. And so they have a part of them that's like a perfectionist that constantly is judging themselves for the way they look, which came from their biological mom, which we know, like, you know, from generations, and generations mm -hmm. where that comes from. But as we keep working with women to heal that, then it will trickle down more and more generation to generation. So that just can't take root anymore. That's my I, ultimate hope. <laughs> I, I have a lot of hope for that. I have a lot of hope for that. And then, and definitely, you know, I'm hoping that folks who are listening to podcasts like ours are really taking it to heart that we've been duped mm -hmm. on so many levels, <laughs> so many levels in particular, you know, I, I, I come from a background, like I said, of owning a spa where literally we know we make money on skincare procedures and skincare, like high end aesthetics. It's a huge industry. And, you know, and a lot of different medical doctors are jumping into it because, yeah, it's good money. And the same thing goes with the hormones. And I'm in that world. I do prescribe hormones. Mm -hmm. but I come at it at a different aspect. Something like, how can the hormone help you to live better longer, right? Yeah. And and ultimately, that's what we're talking about here. How can The we body doesn't lie, right? It, it keeps the score. You know, I have three friends who now are having explants and they're getting their implants removed because their body's rejecting it. And it it can't be sustained in the body any longer. And that will happen, right? Because we can't put toxins in and expect a good outcome. And the more and more we keep waking up to this like intuitive living and embodied living and like really tuning in to our feelings and what's what's happening inside of us, the more and more we get to, to rise out of that, right? Your, your body will tell you what it wants and what it doesn't want down to the products you use, down to the things you're putting into it. And it will have a reaction if it does, if it, if it rejects <laughs> the artificial mm -hmm. things that you're choosing to do. And again, everyone has their own journey about that. Like it's, it's a very personal choice and decision, but it will come to that point where eventually it's just not sustainable. It's toxic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to get to some point where, you know, there's chronic fatigue, there's chronic pain, there's, you know, we're looking at all of the chronic illnesses that show up and and we have to think about it. And yeah, explants are, I mean, on the rise, the the breast implant illness is is such a, a thing. It's, and I don't know how we haven't gotten into anything with the Botox I know that like for chronic pain and it helping to relieve that in folks, I know it can be incredibly beneficial, but at the same time, yeah, it's a toxin. 
how could it how could it not create some energetic change well and and i think we can also make energetic change by what we choose to change within ourselves Mm -hmm. you know clearing out our emotions and our trauma and you know, not carrying all of that fear in our body makes a significant change energetically within. Mm-hmm. And the same places that, you know, we are looking at, like, so for example, the lines that we have here, here, you know, down to the nose line, smell lines, I've seen those change on people when they free themselves from anger, fear, frustration. I mean, we can, we can face read people, right? And you yeah. can see, and like, I, this one here used to be a lot, deeper and yes i've used moisturizer that i think helps you know but i don't i don't think it's all that i don't think it's all that yeah you know we've been conditioned to not let ourselves feel and express right which also creates (laughs) dis-ease in the body and disorder of the mind Mm -hmm. uh and and it is you know aging is going to happen and we can, we can do better as a culture. Mm. We can do better as a society. We can do better supporting our sisters as they age and as they grow. And, and, and there's not much that we can necessarily do to change the way that somebody feels about themselves, but there's something that we can do with the energy that we're bringing into any relationship, Mm -hmm. right? Like that's what we have control over is how, how do people feel when they're around us? Can they be themselves? You know, are we always talking about the next fad or eight? like, what are we, what are our conversations about? Are they on that level? Right. Because then that just breeds more of the energy into that level. We'll never rise above it. If we keep talking about it and shaming it and judging it. And, and I think it's just a lower level type of conversation that I personally don't want, I don't like to be involved in anymore because it brings me down. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, that's not what I'm right. You're feeding it. Right. If there's like a amoeba out there, like you're literally like giving it energy to grow and to keep, to keep being able to be sustained. But it's like, let's talk about actually stuff that fills us up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So huge. What are you creating? What do you love doing? Right. Like, like there, what comes out of our mouth is so powerful. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So such a good point for folks to really think about what comes out of your mouth. It's tough. I've I'm st- I mean, I'm not perfect. None of us are right. But like, I still catch myself saying some wacky stuff to myself just out loud about me, you know, and this too, I think has a huge impact on how we age, but also, right, our conversations, who we surround ourselves by, with, and by, you know, hmm, so many thoughts. Yeah, I mean, the energy will always be there. It's part of our earth plane, but we can always choose to take the higher route. And, and seek out people. I think this is this is what's been fun for me with the podcast is, is seek out people that are on the same wavelength. Wave, I can talk. Wavelength. <laughs> Speaking of words that come out of your mouth. Um, on the same wavelength, but also working, you know, finding folks that, yes, you can have more meaningful conversations with and switch how you talk. Switch how you, you know, I, I encourage people to play with it. Maybe that's maybe that's our action step from mm. this podcast. I don't know. What are you called to tell folks about for their action step? They've heard us talking all about all of this. Yeah, I think it is. Watch your words because they're very creative, right? People think that words are descriptive and that we're describing things, but we're actually creating things. Words are wands. You know, mm-hmm. what wand and what magic are you creating with the words that are coming out of your mouth? I like that. I like that <laughs> a lot. I like that a lot. All right, guys, you have your magic wands. We all do. We've been born with them. Now it's time to think about how you're going to use them for good. So, Alicia, I think that's like a mic drop on that one. I can't even like, 
<laughs> there's nothing we there's nothing we can do beyond that words magical words right there that that uh. is it so let's let's um have folks go learn more about where they can go and find you and go to your podcast alive and awake with alicia and alicia k coaching.com all of that tell folks what's what's going down and how they can work with you and find you I love that. Thank you. Um, yes, obviously the podcast, such a great, great place for me to, to share more, more of my own magic with my words. Um, you could subscribe to my newsletter. If you want to hear about what's going on in my coaching business, uh, there's a free opt-in how to dismantle the three most common unhealthy beliefs you have about yourself, which, um, is full of information and some tools there. And watch out for my online program coming in the next, I would say probably three months, um, you know, wake up to your worth and end the war within. It'll be an online course to really help you dive into where these beliefs came from and really how to do the work to overcome your negative inner self-talk. Mm -hmm. So huge. So huge, guys. We need we need to band together, ladies. If you ha if you haven't caught that from this podcast, this is this is your this is your <laughs> message. Um, gosh, Alicia, thanks again for coming on. I look forward to more fabulous conversations with you. Yes, me too. Thanks for having me. Hey, fellow health junkie! Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in. Please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.